Welcome back everyone to more of our gameplay series of Farming Simulator 22. And welcome back to my new favorite map, No Man's Land. Hopefully you saw my No Man's Land video that I did a, a few days ago here on the channel um, where I talked about the reasons why this is my new favorite map in Farming Sim 22 and it has everything to do with freedom. The fact that this is pretty much an untouched map, no existing field beyond a couple of very small ones uh, that I'm not using. It has no real road structure beyond one main road and no fields, no buildings, and so on. So it's really untouched for me. So what I've been doing is having a great deal of fun as I purchase new property, make new fields from scratch, and a road network, everything, you name it. I have been doing it and have been an absolute blast making this happen. This is easily my new favorite map. I don't even go to the default map anymore. I was having so many issues and glitches on the uh, the base map, the USA base map, I should say, that it just was no longer worth it. So as I continue to look at new maps, this one really jumped out at me. So what we have to do today is, well, basically everything here on the farm. All four of my fields are planted with grass and all four of them are ready to be mowed. We're here in April of, I believe, year three. It may even be year four. I've lost count at this point, but we're here in April. So winter has just gotten over uh, about a month ago. So it is ready for us to not only mow the fields, but of course we're gonna have to transport the grass over to uh, a couple of different areas. In fact, we're gonna need to pick up some wool. Uh, so yeah, a lot of work to be done here on the farm. So I have gotten out of the habit of simply tabbing my way through machines because I have found that it is a lot more fun for me to simply walk around on the farm. It gives me a much better idea of the scale of this particular farm. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy started. All right, let's go ahead and unfold him. So we'll get him started here on what I'll call field number one. Right, let's try to make sure he doesn't skip over anything. There we go. Now, I've noticed here uh, very recently that we've had the first versions of course play have been released. Now I say versions because it seems like pretty much every day or every other day they have been releasing some minor updates and so on but as I was looking through it I noticed that overall uh, it seems very incomplete at this point so we're looking at the initial very rough version so I'm staying away from it for now. There's a lot more functionality that I need from course play so I'm just going to give it uh, we'll give it a few more weeks, we'll give it a few more months, however long it needs, but I will definitely be using course play once it becomes uh, much more robust than it is right now. So let's climb in here. Actually, let's see uh, what we have for each of our animals. So I have both pigs, mostly as a test. Uh, we've got pigs, and then I've also got lots and lots of sheep. Um, so pretty much everything I'm using here as far as the animals and most of the stuff I'm using on this map overall is modded. And the reason why it's modded is because I simply need a much larger production base than what the default uh, animal pens or production buildings will allow. As I talked about in that initial video for this particular map, uh, we didn't do any gameplay in that video, but I was talking about the production buildings and mods and so forth. Basically, I want to do production of things like wool on a much larger scale than what the default game was really intended for. We would end up with so many production buildings that it would not be friendly to the frames. So I have decided to go with a much stronger group of buildings that have much larger uh, production capacities. All right, so it looks like we've just had, let's see, we're in puberty. They're at 66%. So actually, we need to go ahead and sell some of these right now. Yes, and that is exactly what we need to do. So I'll give you a, a brief look at how I've been working the pigs. Now, I have very little experience with the pigs. I've worked with them some in Farming Sim 19 and previous before that. 
Uh, but for me, it's more or less limited. So what I've started doing here is you notice that I've got I've got some adults that are 18 months. Then I've got some that are at four months. And then you can see there's a few that have just been born at zero. So that completely fills up this particular pen. But what I need to do is keep everything flowing. I need to keep selling out pigs so that I have more and more room. So what I have done is we're actually going to sell off all of these, even the newborns, even though that's not really the best way. We're going to go ahead and we're going to sell those uh, off. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to come back out of here. Let's actually hop back out and go right over to this paw print icon. All right, so we want to make sure. All right, so the age six months, and then we've got zero months. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead. How many of these do I have? Oh, just one. Okay. Oh, wait. This is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. I almost started doing the wrong thing there. We need these guys. Now, there we go. So let's go ahead and sell those off. And then here we've got. How many of these do we have? Now that I've messed up the uh, the plus minus here. It is so easy for me to forget about the pigs. All right, so we've got 60 of these. I'm gonna go ahead and sell those again. Those are just four months. I actually let those go a little bit farther uh, in age than I intended to. All right, so these guys are four months. I wanna make sure I don't sell off the adults. Yeah, there we go. So we've got two more groups that need to be sold off of the young ones and so there's more four months let's go ahead and sell those off and again you can see how much money we're making from that so now what do we have left so we got 18 months 18 months and then we got a few at four months let's go ahead and sell those basically this just allows me to start fresh. So now we have 240, which means that once these guys reproduce again, then we'll be right up near that 500 again at 480. So everything is as it should be. So let's actually hop back out and let's look at sold animals. So we made just shy of 70 grand today on the pigs. All right, I can deal with that. Now we've got, looks like we've got enough food for them. But I'm going to go ahead and top that off a little bit. Now this size trailer that we have is enough food generally for at least two days, if not three. So I've, I've bought a pretty sizable trailer for this activity just to make sure that if I forget a day or two that I'm still okay on our food supply. All right, so the grass mowing is going along perfectly. Now again, like I talked about in the previous video, you notice that the road network doesn't exactly line up in a perfect grid there. We've got uh, some, some turns to make as we work our way through the main portion of the farms. But that was all due to the way I was purchasing uh, one at a time, these different areas on the map, and that just happened to be the way it worked out. Now I have plans I'm thinking about whether or not I want to keep this road network right here and just sort of cut straight across and then rework the fields after that. I've thought about doing that just to keep things simple uh, once we get into course play and auto drive, that type of thing. But uh, to this point, I kind of enjoy the fact that everything is a little bit off. It's not perfectly in sync. So what I mean by the road network is you notice right here, the road network, we come straight until we have to turn left and basically make, we've got a little bit of uh, a bus stop effect here. You got a little bit of a, a curb there. So I may just go straight across there and work it from there, but we'll see how it goes right now. Like I said, I'm kind of enjoying the fact that it doesn't line up right. All right, so this guy is almost done with the first field. So we'll get him started here momentarily on the second field. And then here in a moment, we'll be hopping in to the big track, which I believe has, it's a Fent model, I forget, but it's 
has like 450 horsepower. So basically it can handle anything I need to throw at it here on the farm. That was actually my first purchase. As far as uh, tractors, this one we're in now, I've, I've fallen in love with the Fent models on this map. Uh, this one, the 724 Vario, and it has about half that much horsepower, somewhere around 250, 225, somewhere in that range. Again, I forget exactly how much it's got, but it's got enough for anything we're going to need it to do. All right, here we see there's my planter slash cedar, which is perfect for uh, setting up our new fields, which are all pretty good size. Then we've got a cultivator. This is what I've been using to create new fields. So I downloaded a mod that would allow me to create fields with this because I had been doing it with uh, the standard plow, but it just took so very long that the mod really helped me out and allowed me to create fields a lot quicker with the cultivator, much wider working with. Then we've got our fertilizer, we've got our lime spreader, and then We've got our loading wagon and our Fent 942 is the model on this one. All right, so we're gonna hop out here. We're gonna get this guy lined up. All right, before we actually get that guy going, I'm gonna wait till we get a little bit closer. Let's go ahead and turn everything on. Let's make sure we're actually picking things up. Sometimes I forget to actually lower the pickup on these. Oh, look out. We're already all over the place. All right, so here on the right, you see the spinnery as well as uh, the tailor who's going to create our clothes. And so far, that has gone really well. Again, these are modded buildings simply to increase their production. I didn't care about decreasing cost or anything like that. I want there to be cost involved. That's part of the fun. But I did want to uh, increase the production because I was going to need something like seven or eight of those things lined up for all of the wool that we're producing on a daily basis. And I have plans to increase that production. So yeah, it was going to take way too many buildings to make that happen. So it's just much better to have these modded buildings with a much greater capacity. All right, so we're going to go to we're going to go ahead and grab uh, this. Usually, I can get about three three rows. Each row gets me about thirty three percent fill. Uh, if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that right now we're about forty five percent full in our loading wagon. But again, each one of these rows is about 33%. So three rows and we'll be filled. We'll be bringing part of it over here. Uh, in fact, a good bit of it will end up over here at the uh, silage silo to be converted from grass into silage. And then uh, actually before we get into that, we're gonna need to take some and top off um, our sheep farms. So we've got our sheep enclosures that uh, look like they're gonna need to be topped off about once a year, really. Uh, and I plan on doing that here at the beginning of the mowing season, here in March or April, depending on how everything works out on the growth rate. But yeah, like I said, we're in somewhere either at the beginning of year three, it might even be year four, I've lost track. Uh, but things have been going great. Fortunately, purchasing new areas of land is not expensive. It's about 85 grand to pick up new areas. So it is certainly not cost prohibitive. Uh, the designer of the map really made it very user friendly in order to get where you need to go uh, and really take steps in building your farm without it being too terribly expensive. All right, so we're gonna reach 100. Yes, we are. So we reached right at 100 just as we were getting to the end. So I'm going to go ahead while we're over here. We're going to grab our mower, get him started on field number two. So again, I think these fields are much larger and a much better size for what I'm really interested in doing in my playthroughs. Because uh, when I'm playing, I really, really enjoy doing things on a much larger scale, much more of an industrial scale. 
But of course, that takes more money, more time, and more equipment. And in particular, expensive equipment. All right, so we got that guy up and running. So let's hop back over to our our big boy tractor. What was this one? The 942. I kept wanting to say 742. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and fill this one. Now, the reason I put them in opposite directions, actually a couple of reasons why I did that. One is because I like to be able to see the animals. Let's see, there we go. We got our icon. It comes up, so let's go ahead and fill these guys up. We have very little extra room for headroom as we walk or as we drive under here. This is tight. All right, looks like these guys, yep, they took the entire load. But again, only have to do this about once a year. So let's actually take a look. So we took care of the immediate needs of our pigs. We got about 77 grand. These guys use somewhere, if memory serves, it's about 25 grand a day, something like that. So they got enough for a few days in there now. All right, so we're at 53 grand for this group. And okay, 92 grand here. So they'll need a little bit more. And then you can also see that uh, we got we got some wool to pick up, so we'll need to take care of that. But for right now, we need to get back over here and work some more grass. We're going to do one more load of grass, and then we'll hop back over and we'll take care of that wool for today. So what you're seeing over there is a lot of wool and that is what I'm getting each day. In fact, now that the sheep in uh, the one enclosure have reached maturity, I should be getting even more wool each day because obviously when they first start out as uh, babies, they don't give as much wool as when they're fully grown and have completed maturity. So we should have passed that point now and we should have Plenty. But of course, all of that wool is being taken over to the spinnery. And then finally, the tailor will turn that into, turn the fabric into the clothing, which will then be sold. Now, also, once we get the grass that we need for the sheep, that's where the BGA comes into play. Because the BGA serves as my additional income. And when I first got started, it was my sole source of income. And it works very well because, well, if you don't use it for a few days, it doesn't matter. So generally what I like uh, to do is I like to have it full for the amount that will be uh, required for it to produce for the next three days, which will take us through the growth cycle until it's time to, uh, to mow once again and start this cycle all over. All right, so right now we're at about 55% on this. Again, about 33% each row. I did not do that on purpose. It just sort of worked out that way. I also cut the field short. Obviously, we had some more room back there if I wanted to keep going. But I wanted to make sure with auto drive and course play coming, I wanted to make sure I give these guys plenty of room to work with the AI. And I think we have gotten just that. The only thing we're really going to have to worry about once we get to that point is we're going to have to deal with the fact that the roads are, you know, we're going to have people running right next to the fields and that might cause a little bit of a traffic jam every now and then. But other than that, we should be perfect. Plenty of room for everybody to get their work done without infringing on the other AI. That is the ultimate goal here. And obviously, as we're looking around, I've only purchased and started using about four tracks of land in here. And that's all. So there is so much more. There's a total of 60 here in... Oh, let's go ahead and shut this off. There's a total of 60 plots of land. And yeah, we're in good shape. We've got plenty of room for growth, I'm actually going to go ahead since we're on this side and I'm going to hop through here 
and work this guy. Because again, we want to make sure everybody gets what they need. Alright, come on, give me the icon. There we go. You've got that... I really wish this zone for the wool wasn't didn't extend out quite so far so that we could pull straight through there but at the end of the day it still works out just fine but if we didn't have to worry about that then we would be in extra good shape there you can see the UTV that's what I used to to move around the oh wait hold on all right let's lower the pickup thought I had already done that, but apparently it didn't pick up on the fact that I hit that key. Alright, what are we doing here? I turned it on. Apparently it's not on. Yeah, it's not on. Okay, well we're going to try that again. Come on now. Because it was going way too fast for that to be right. Yeah, there we go. So the way I do this is very simple. I simply put it on the uh, cruise control once I get everything going so I hit cruise while ago and it was going way too fast so I knew something was wrong immediately all right so as we finish up so you can see we're not going to quite finish up this field with this load because we've got a total of four rows left so we're going to have an extra row that we'll have to deal with uh, a little bit later on because I really want to get that wool now we'll load up the wool on my auto load tractor. So what I'll do is actually, I will go get the other tractor probably and just leave this guy hooked up. Uh, leave him look, hooked up here to the loading wagon. So we'll run and grab him. We'll hop in the UTV here momentarily. After we get this last load of grass, that should, I believe, top off uh, the two enclosures for the sheep. So I think we'll be good to go as far as getting the sheep fed for several months. Probably uh, 12 months, if I'm guessing. Because I didn't purchase the sheep until about halfway through last year. It was around June or July, something like that. And uh, so the starting food that you guys saw earlier when we were in the menu, that's what was left after about six to seven months, something like that. Yeah, I am extremely happy that I found this particular map. Now, the real question is, where do we go from here? I would love to continue adding uh, some more sheep and I talked a little bit about in the uh, the other video about how and there's a little room there before you get to the road network. I want to put at least one more, maybe two more, if I can squeeze them in there, and that way we can have even more sheep, which means even more wool and even more clothing. And then as we continue to expand, then we'll just continue to plant more grass so that we keep the BGA fed with what it needs as well as uh, the sheep but right now food is definitely not a problem we have enough grass here to keep the BGA going as well as uh, we're gonna go ahead and pick up this last two percent here before we head off might as well grab it while we're here there we go so now we'll top off both of the sheep enclosures then we'll hop in the UTV run over and grab because you can see the trailer is already sitting there I leave it sitting there all of the time right, there we go let's go ahead and drop off the remaining grass that we need to fill this one up all right still 36 grand left so we'll drop off the remainder of that here in the second enclosure Again, there's at least room for one more. I don't know that we're going to get two in there, but we're certainly going to try it. Get these guys as close together as I can. Uh, but again, I want them to be a certain distance apart simply because, uh, number one, I always like to see 
the animals when I'm working on the different fields and also because you notice that the wool production is to the point where I can simply drive this trailer right down this line and pick up all of the wool without having to go around corners and trying to pick it up that way. All right, let's hop into the Mahindra and this is easily one of the most fun vehicles to drive because it has absolutely no grip. When we go around corners, we're likely to spin it out because it just has no grip whatsoever. I'm trying not to. Yep, there we go, right there. <laughs> it's just it's just so much fun. It's so different to deal with than uh, what we have with, you know, the normal stuff, the normal tractors that we uh, work with. Just so much faster, so much more fun to drive. All right, let's... I'm actually going to leave the trailer there rather than bringing it back. Uh, I could park it back up underneath this garage, the sheds there, but I think we're better off just leaving it where it is because I may do one more load today. And the pigs are really just a test. They don't really make a whole lot of money for me. Uh, they do when I sell them, but then they the food is actually very very expensive since at this point in the gameplay I'm not raising any of my own feed for them so it's more something that I'm doing just for fun at this point all right where is that trailer there it is all right so this trailer is going to work the exact same way as the ones I did in the mod spotlight video this is a little different model a different download but we need to get the type set up right now it's on a liquid tank you can see that in the top left hand corner at the very bottom of that pop-up window liquid tank we're going to change it to pallet and then I'm simply going to hit the R key and we're going to load all of these up and we'll see if we have enough room now the trigger for these is oh yeah yeah that's going to be tight all right let's go ahead and all right, where is the next one? There should be one in here. There we go. Because these things will fall off. You can see we can stack them too high, but uh, you're pressing your luck unless you have these things locked down. We'll just go ahead and grab everything, whether it's a full pallet or not. That really does not matter to us. Let's make sure we get everything Okay, so actually that worked out pretty good. Not quite entirely full. Not hardly. Ooh, that is. Well, that's a precarious situation for that to be in. But thankfully, for the purposes of the game, we're perfectly fine. Now, if these things fall off, I'm going to go a little bit slower here. I'm not going to go quite as fast as I could, just to make sure we don't topple over. top right hand corner you can see our money at three hundred and twelve thousand dollars I think I still have a bit of a loan so we'll we'll look at that and actually pay that off if I do still have a loan balance all right so all we need to do is drop through the area these will automatically be dropped off so we'll slowly pull through here and there we have it okay so let's actually take a look here uh, let's go down to the production chain. So right now the silage is done. Okay, we'll be refilling that with uh, the other fields. So the silage and the BGA, all of that needs to be refilled. Uh, the wool, we just dropped off 10,700 liters of wool. So that's going to keep this guy going a little bit. But here's what I wanted to show you guys. Here's the cycles per month, which of course is a day. Um, in this particular work because I, I do like using the one day per month cycle. So that's 2,400 of these and then you see we have 60 turns into 30. So it is a huge increase in the production versus the baseline uh, spinnery as well as tailor shop. Same thing here. A lot of cycles using a lot of fabric and at the end of it all you end up with a lot of clothes and hopefully a lot of money through all of this. All right, so let's actually scroll down a little bit. All right, so sold products, you can see how that has been going each day. Now, the sold products, of course, 
that's based on our uh, wool production. Then our biogas income, about 170 per day until we finally ran out in March. We ran out of uh, silage. So that's why you see that drop there in March. So about 170 grand per day throughout the year until we get to winter time. But overall, everything is looking very good. Now you're gonna see some negatives in here. And the reason for that is because I've been buying new stuff, storage, production buildings, you name it, I've been buying uh, more land and so forth. So that's why you see those numbers. But other than that, everything is going along quite well. Very happy about that. Now I did notice at the bottom, we have a loan balance 145. So let's just go ahead and repay all that. This will free us up because when we come back next time, uh, we're going to look at some expansion. Where do we want to buy land or do we need to buy new land and where do we go from here? So as we end up today's video, I'm actually going to bring this trailer back over uh, and get it ready for tomorrow morning where we'll pick up some more wool. But we'll need to think about where we want to go from here. There are a lot of plots of land on this map. However, you have to be careful because not all of them are flat or at least flat-ish, flat enough that uh, they'll be good for us in our particular needs. So that's something to, to think about. How much can we actually expand? Do we need it to be flat? Do we? Does it really matter? All sorts of things for us to think about. But for today, that's gonna do it. We've gotten part of the work done. You can see our guy over here um, I believe it's actually done. Yep, he's done there. I'll get him started on field three and then field four. And meanwhile, I've got a lot of grass to pick up and take all the way over to our silo. So, so, uh, excuse me, silo, if I can get the words out. But that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me and stick around for more No Man's Land.